Hello. In our last couple of lessons, we learned to use the truth tree method to test for consistency. In this lesson, we'll discuss the use of truth trees for determining whether an argument is valid. So far, we've talked about open and closed paths in trees, and also about complete trees with open paths. Likewise, we said that a set S of sentences is consistent if and only if S's complete tree has at least one open path, and inconsistent otherwise. Now we can introduce a terminological shortcut, and we'll talk about open and closed trees. Thus, we'll say that a complete tree T is open whenever T has at least one open path, and is closed otherwise. More explicitly, a tree T is open if and only if T is complete and T has at least one open path. Correspondingly, a tree T is closed if and only if T is complete and all of T's paths are closed. Now we can have more concise statements of the consistency tree test. A set of sentences is consistent if and only if its tree is open. And it is inconsistent if and only if its tree is closed. We can use truth trees to test for the presence of logical properties other than consistency. To do so, we must translate those properties into truth tree outcomes. Let's give you an example. Suppose that you have a recipe that tells you the temperature in Celsius, but your oven can only be set in Fahrenheit. Then you have to translate the Celsius instructions into the Fahrenheit scale that your oven can work with. In a more or less analogous way, the truth tree method only displays consistency or inconsistency. So to use it to test for validity, we must translate questions about validity into questions about consistency. Now, Celsius to Fahrenheit conversion is handled by a simple numerical rule. Whereas the translation between consistency and validity requires a couple of conceptual steps, which we'll discuss in a minute. So in general, to test a property in terms of trees, we have to give a definition of the property in question in terms of the consistency of sets of sentences. And then we state a test for the redefined property in terms of set of sentences and open closed trees. I hope that this will get clearer as we proceed. But let's start with the first aspect, namely thinking about validity in terms of consistency and inconsistency. Remember that an argument is valid if and only if it is impossible for its premises to be true and its conclusion false. Suppose that the following argument, which contains premises P1 through Pn and conclusion C, is valid. Then it's impossible for the set of premises P1 to Pn to be true while C, the conclusion, is false. But remember that for any sentence, that sentence is false if and only if its negation is true. Then we can reformulate this by saying that if the argument is valid, then it is impossible for the set comprised by the sentences and the negation of the conclusion to be true. But instead of saying that it's impossible for both X and Y, a couple of sentences, to be true at the same time, we can say that the set X, Y is inconsistent. So we can say that if this argument is valid, then the set comprised by its premises and the negation of its conclusion is inconsistent. So, again, I say it again, if this argument is invalid, then the set comprised by the premises P1 to Pn and not C is inconsistent. So, to every valid argument A, there corresponds a particular inconsistent set of sentences, namely, the set comprised by A's premises and the negation of A's conclusion. Since a set of sentences is inconsistent if and only if its tree is closed, then the argument containing premises P1 through Pn and conclusion C is valid if and only if the tree T corresponding to the premises and the negation of the conclusion is closed. So we can give a definition. An argument A is valid whenever the set comprised by A's premises and the negation of A's conclusion yields a closed tree. So let's give an example. Let's test the following argument for validity. So the first step is to form the set comprised by the premises and the negation of the conclusion. So we list them here. So it's A or B, C or not B, and not A or C. 
The second step is to perform the tree test on this set. And we do it, we see that, that all the paths close, therefore the tree is closed and the set is inconsistent. So we apply the definition and we say that, well, the tree for the set is closed again, therefore the argument is valid. Now let's test the following argument for validity. Then we drew the tree and what happens? Well, both of the paths are open. So the tree is open. That means that the argument is invalid. So the tree for the set is open. So the corresponding argument is invalid. Now I could give you this task. Find a counterexample for the argument. And how would you go about it? Well, remember that a counterexample to the validity of an argument is an assignment in which all of the argument's premises are true and its conclusion is false. But we know that the conclusion is false if and only if the denial of that conclusion is true. And so we need an assignment in which all the premises are true and also the denial of the conclusion is true. But such an assignment is precisely what an open path of our previous set provides. So we go back to our tree and we can pick either of those paths. Let's pick the left one. And we see that we have not F, G, and D. D appears without any negation, so this assignment assigns true to it. F appears negated, so we assign it false, and G appears unnegated, so we assign it true. So this is a counterexample then that makes all the premises true and the conclusion false. Well, let's check whether the counterexample actually does what it's supposed to do. So if this works, it would make those premises true and the conclusion false. So let's go one by one. So we see that in the case of if f then g, we know that f is false, therefore the conditional is true. g and d are each individually made true by the assignment, therefore their conjunction is true. And f is directly made false, therefore the conclusion is false. So this is a case in which the premises are true and the conclusion is false. This is a good counterexample to the argument, tells us that it is invalid. Okay, this is all for today. Goodbye.